Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and this is another episode of Ticket Thursday. We are now on 8th episode of Ticket Thursday and if you want to check out the previous episodes, they are on the Ticket Thursday playlist on the channel. So for today's video, I'm going to share with you actual tickets that we have at work and how to troubleshoot and resolve those issues. So if you are interested in today's video, if you want to know more about what kind of tickets we get in the workplace, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started with today's video. So we are going to simulate the ticketing system and we are going to pretend that we are actually doing the tickets. I've compiled around 5 tickets that we got recently from work and I'm going to share with you the most common ticket that we have been getting from the past few weeks from multiple users. So this has been a common issue in our workplace recently. Okay, let's say that we are actually working in a ticketing system and let's follow the past practice which is to check the priority of the tickets that just came in that are open. So we have a couple of open tickets in here but we have to prioritize which ones we're going to do first if you're just looking into the ticketing system when you come in to work. So we have one high priority and let's get to that first and let's click on this ticket that we have. So it's an Outlook issue and the subject is Outlook not working and the user said I'm sitting at a different desk today and I can't open Outlook email. This is the error message I keep receiving. So he actually attached the actual error message in here which is a good thing because sometimes users just say something is not working and you have to keep asking them until they give more specific answers. So just in case the user didn't include anything, just ask them for a screenshot of the error message or just tell them to copy and paste the error message that they've been getting. Okay, so let's look at the error message. So actually at the bottom, there is an error code. So if that was provided, usually we just copy and paste this and Google this or check in our ticketing system if there's already tickets that have been submitted and see if there was already a resolution for this issue. So that's one of the first steps that we can take in resolving this kind of issue. So let's try to Google the error code in here and see what Google says. Uh, Outlook issue. Okay, so Google actually has an answer in here. So this is caused by outdated or corrupted login details saved within an app or within Windows. So we have been receiving this kind of issue recently. I think more than around 10 users have been reporting this and submitted a ticket about this exact error message. So this has been common in our workplace because it's that time where users have to change their password and what happens is Outlook is still caching the old password and it's not syncing with the new password that they have changed into recently. That's why this error message comes up. So the very easy solution for this is just to have them sign out and sign back in again with their new password. Or if they didn't change the password and still getting this error message, you can still try to have them sign out and sign back in because sometimes Microsoft is not syncing our credentials properly and that gets everything in sync with our current credentials. To sign out from Outlook desktop app, go to file tab, click on account or office account, and then on top, click on sign out. And after that, you can sign back in by clicking on sign in. Okay, so let's go back to our ticketing system. So the rest are mediums and low. So this is just up to your best judgment on which ticket you should take care of next. So I'm just going to go with this. This seems like an easy email to close. Uh, someone is asking if they receive a legitimate email. And there are times that we get this kind of request or questions from users. And users now are more educated on phishing emails or illegitimate emails that they are getting. And they just want to make sure and ask IT if those are legitimate emails. So sometimes they send us the emails or they forward it to us so we can examine the email. So let's go ahead and open this. Okay, and see what the user says. Okay, so it says, I received this email. Is this legitimate? So this is the email content. And the user also attached a screenshot in here. 
So this looks like it came from Microsoft and that's why the user is also kind of confused because it looks like a legitimate email when you look at it. But then they're asking you to do something like click on this to listen so that makes the user suspicious and that's why we're receiving this because we wanted to make sure if this is legitimate okay so let's examine the email that our user got and i'm gonna give you some tips on recognizing phishing attacks and how to spot the red flags okay so first thing you want to examine is the sender's email address so usually phishing emails often come from address that looks official but has subtle differences like using a variation of a legitimate domain in our case here the sender's email is a dead giveaway that it's a phishing email because first of all it's not using the proper domain from microsoft if it's an email from microsoft usually the domain will be at microsoft.com but this has at web access alert.com which makes it really suspicious so if that's what the sender's email looks like then definitely it's a phishing email then next is you can examine the date and time check if it's an unusual time when you get the emails usually and verify the sender's time zone if it makes sense next is to check for multiple recipients if you can recognize them and also if their email address also makes sense and they're using the proper domain next check for the subject if it has a threatening or urgent tone phishing emails often create a sense of urgency or panic to make you act quickly without thinking an example of this would be your account has been locked act now to restore access something like that then next is to check for the email content legitimate companies usually address you by name so if an email begins with dear customer or hello user it is a red flag also look out for poor grammar or spelling mistakes and odd phrasing also no legitimate organization will ask you to provide sensitive information like your password social security number or bank details via email phishing emails often include malicious links or attachments so hover over links to see where they lead and if it's suspicious never ever click on them also avoid downloading unsolicited attachments especially zip files exe files or word documents with macros okay so another common email that we get is about voicemail if you are using phone desk in your company sometimes there will be requests to unlock the voicemail pin because they get locked out they forget their password so we also have that and let's open this email from the user just says hello could someone please unlock my voicemail this is the actual message that we got from the workplace and normally since we know who the user is we can just search up the username on our system and we'll just show up but sometimes it depends on your system sometimes you have to ask for the, their extension number so you, you would know which voicemail it is or just to be safe just ask for the extension number of the voicemail because sometimes they are all they are also using a shared voicemail so you can type in can you please provide the extension voicemail okay so this is pretty is easy to resolve we are using Cisco unity for our voicemail system and that system is pretty easy to navigate and figure out how to unlock the pin so this is an example of how we resolve this issue so we just go to Cisco unity system and search for the extension number of the voicemail and then I went to password settings and at the bottom you can see there's a unlock pin button in here that you can click and that's how we resolve this issue okay so another ticket that was assigned to me in the workplace is about our security camera computers Okay, so this is what the ticket looks like. Figure out if we can do auto start on the new computers from BIOS without manual intervention. So it was actually my manager who opened this ticket and assigned it to me. And we are already working on the security computer cameras. That's why he didn't provide that many information because I already know about this. But to give you a background, we have replaced our 
computer for the security cameras to a newer computer and there was one day where a power outage happened and of course it shut down or powered off the computer for security cameras and the security guards working there are not familiar with the setup for the computer they don't know where the computer is or sometimes they don't want to touch you know the computers because they might mess it up or they might make it worse so because of the power outage they couldn't see the cameras and they have to wait for the IT person to come in because it this happened in the middle of the night so what we wanted to do to solve this kind of issue when power outage comes next time is to be able to automatically power on the computer if there is like a power outage or it will power off all of a sudden so oh, we believe that that can be changed in the BIOS and there's a BIOS setting for that and we just have to figure it out so a ticket was open and assigned to me so sometimes there are those kind of issues that are not very common they are kind of niche but you will also get some kind of uh, issue sometimes that is more specific to a certain scenario or, si or situation that happens to your company so it's not always an error message or a very common issue that you can come across on the ticket sometimes it's a very unique situation just like this so this is how i have resolved the issue the computer that we have is an hp mini elite so once the computer was rebooted i pressed escape before it boots the operating system and it showed me the startup menu so i just chose the bio setup i wasn't sure what key it was so it was f10 so i got into the bio settings and i researched prior to this so online it said that it would be under the boot order or the boot options it's under the advanced tab in here so i just clicked on that to see if it's in here so the settings is called after power loss so this is where you can select what will happen after there's a power loss so there's different options in here it was defaulted to power off but then i've changed it to power on not sure why it's gray in here now after the change but this is where you can change the bio setting after a power outage if you want to power on the computer right away okay so that will be it for today's video there will be more ticket videos to come so please watch out for that i hope that you learned something from today's video if you have any questions please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below and i hope to see you guys in the next video in this series thank you so much for watching